Hey, this is Presh Talwalker. A safe has a code lock that unlocks if you input the correct four digits in any order. The lock has a keypad with the digits going from zero to nine. For example, suppose the unlock code is one zero zero zero. The safe will open for any order you input those digits. You could input exactly that code or you could put the one in the second position, or you could put the one in the third or the fourth position. Or for another example, consider the unlock code 1234. The safe will open for any permutation of the same numbers. The question is, how many different unlock codes are there? Two unlock codes are equivalent if they contain the same digits, and they are different if they do not use the same digits. Can you figure it out? Give this problem a try, and when you're ready, keep watching the video for the solution. In an ordered code lock, there are 10 possible choices for each of the four spots in the code, making for a total of 10 to the power of four, or 10,000 possible codes. In this unordered code lock, we have to avoid double counting since codes like 1000 and 0100 are equivalent unlock codes as they are the same digits in a different order. So one way that we can count the unordered code locks is to count the number of unique digits in the unlock code. We'll start out by counting the number of unique digits being equal to 1. How many ways are there to choose this one digit? Well, there are 10 choose one or 10 different digits that we have. Once we choose that one digit, there's only one possible unlock code, which is using that same number four times. So the number of different codes can be enumerated and we can count that there are 10 different codes if we have one unique digit. But what if we have two unique digits? The first thing is we need to count how many ways there are to choose these two digits. There will be 10 choose 2, which equals 45 different ways. But even after we select the two digits, we can have more than one pattern. We can have one of the digits being repeated three times, or we can have the other digit being repeated three times, or we can have both digits being repeated two times. Suppose the digits are 0 and 1, we can have the 0 repeated three times, we can have the one repeated three times, or we can have both digits being equal to two times. So there are three possible patterns once we select the two unique digits. So we take the 45 and multiply by three to get that there are 135 different codes if we have two unique digits in the unlock code. But we could also have three unique digits in the unlock code. Now there will be 10 choose three ways to choose these three digits. We also have to consider the possible patterns. There will actually be three because each of the digits could be repeated in the pattern. If we had the digits zero, one, and two, we could have the digit zero repeated, we could have the digit one repeated, or we could have the digit two repeated. So we take 120 multiplied by the three possible patterns to get to 360. Finally, we could have four unique digits. There will be 10 choose four, which equals 210 ways to choose the digits. Once we choose them, there's only one possible pattern because we have to use each digit exactly once. So there will be 210 possible different codes if we have four unique digits. So we can now get the total number of different codes by adding up these different possibilities. This gets to our answer of 715. There are a couple of observations to make here. First of all, this is tremendously smaller than the 10,000 codes when we had ordered codes. And second, this method does get to the correct answer, but it involves many different steps. And if you, for example, just forget one of the possible patterns, you're going to get the wrong answer because you're not gonna multiply correctly and then you're not gonna add up the correct numbers and it'll get to the wrong answer. So while this method does work, it is prone to miscalculation 
and there are many steps where you can make an error. So you might ask, is there another way that we could get to the answer more directly with fewer computations? The answer is yes. There is an elegant combinatorial method where you count the number of non-negative integer solutions to an equation. So we'll set this up by writing x sub i to be the number of times digit i appears in the unlock code. We are going to convert this problem into an algebra problem. We need each x sub i to be a non-negative number between 0 and 4 because we could use each digit between 0 and 4 times in an unlock code. Furthermore, an unlock code uses 4 digits, so we need the sum of all the x sub i's to be equal to 4. This means we have the equation x sub 0 to x sub 9 being equal to 4. This will be true for any valid unlock code. And, in order to get a valid unlock code, the number of unlock codes translates to the problem of how many non-negative integer solutions are there to this equation. So, it seems like we haven't really made progress on this problem. We've taken this unlock code problem and converted it to an algebra problem, which seems like it's going to be much more difficult to solve. I mean, how do we take into account when one digit goes up, we need to make sure another digit doesn't exceed 4. So amazingly, there is a clever way to count the number of non-negative integer solutions, and it is a general method that we can use for many problems like this. So the trick is to view the problem in terms of stars and bars. We take our answer of equals 4, and we say we'll imagine we have 4 stars. We want to divide them into 10 different groups because we have 10 variables going x sub 0 to x sub 9. We can create 10 different groups by using 9 bars. Variable x sub 0 will be the first group on the left, then x sub 1 will be the next group between two bars, and so on until x sub 9 will be the group to the right of the final bar. For example, Let's say we have four stars that are arranged as such. I'm now going to place nine different bars. I can place them either next to another bar, or I can place them in between the stars. So once we've placed nine bars, we can actually see that there will be 10 different groups. And we can identify the groups with the variables of our algebra equation. So in this arrangement of stars and bars, we can convert it into an equation where only the variables x sub 3, x sub 4, and x sub 6 are non-zero. x sub 3 is equal to 1, x sub 4 is equal to 2, and x sub 6 is equal to 1. This is a valid solution to this equation. Furthermore, we can convert this into an unlock code. This would use the digit 3, the digit 4 two times, and the digit 6 once. So we have a connection between unlock codes, this algebraic equation, and the stars and bars representation. Now this illustration is an unlock code that uses three unique digits. But I showed you that the unlock code can also have one, two, or four unique digits as well. So let me show you there's a different stars and bars representation which will get us to counting a different number of unique digits. In this representation, we have x sub 0 being equal to 1, and x sub 9 being equal to 3, and all of the other variables being equal to 0. Again, we have a valid solution to this equation, and this gives us an unlock code 0 followed by 3 9s. The digit 0 is used once, and the digit 9 is used 3 times. So here we have two unique digits in the unlock code. I'll show you another representation of stars and bars where we just have x sub 5 being equal to 4. This will be the unlock code 5555 5, 5, where the digit 5 is used 4 times and we just have one unique digit in this unlock code. We could also have a stars and bars representation where we have 4 unique digits. Here are the variables x sub 1, x sub 2, x sub 7, and x sub 8 are equal to 1. We have another valid solution to this equation. 
and we have the unlock code 1278. We have four unique digits. So the stars and bars representation will actually capture all the non-negative solutions to this equation and it'll count the number of unlock codes. So now we need to figure out how many ways can we arrange four stars and nine bars? Well, notice that we have a total of 13 different items or 13 spots because we have four stars and nine bars. So once we specify the placement of the nine bars, the four, bar, four stars will fill the remaining positions. So we start out with 13 different spots. And once we have these spots, we place these bars in nine of the different positions. Once we do that, we have exactly four different spots left for the stars. So how many ways can we arrange 13 items where we have nine bars? Well, this will be equal to 13 choose nine, which is exactly 715. And notice we get to exactly the same answer in a completely different way without having to figure out anything about the code patterns, multiplying them and adding them all up. So this is one calculation. We have 13 choose nine that gets us to 715. Now, once you know this method, it's, it was complicated to set up, but now we can actually use it to solve problems generally. So how can we solve the number of non-negative integer solutions if we have our variables summing up to n? Well, notice we can represent this by having n stars that we will divide into our different groups using r minus one bars. So we have a total of n plus r minus one items or n plus r minus one spots and each ordering is specified once we select the positions for the r minus one bars. So the number of solutions will be n plus r minus one choose r minus one. And it's one calculation which will count the number of non-negative solutions. It would also count the number of unlock codes if we had a different number for the unlock code say being equal to five digits or if we're using only a subset of the 10 different digits from zero to nine. So you can solve any of those problems using this one formula. Did you figure it out? And which method did you use? Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel. I make videos on math and game theory. You can catch me on my blog, Mind Your Decisions, which you can follow on Facebook, Google Plus, and Patreon. You can catch me on social media at Prashawalker. And if you like this video, please check out my books. There are links in the video description.